Welcome, bronies, to the FOB Equestria podcast, the official podcast of FOB Equestria. I have with me this week Commander Firebrand, Navy bronies, <laughs> Silvermane, and Tweak, who just laughed a little crazily into Episode the mic. Episode 425.26, Princess Discord, two-parter where Discord becomes a draconic quellicorn and replaces Celestia. <laughs> yes, apparently wow. um, Tweak wasn't aware that uh, those tweets by M.A. Larson and Megan McCarthy were April Fool's jokes, yeah. and we just informed him that they were. Sit on rotate firebrand, I'm taking what I can get. Yes, so <laughs> if, before we started this podcast, we were, Tweak happened to stumble across the Equestria Daily Post of the new episode, the new season spoilers. And Equestria girls were launched with a partnering show Equestria boys where ponies turn into trucks with rocket launchers. <laughs> yeah. I need to change my pants. That's the awesomest idea ever. <laughs> so we, we happened to point out to him, hey, what by any chance were those made on the first? And then he went into a fit of rage because it wasn't true. I feel very rage. sorry for, for I feel very sorry for the soldiers under him. He he needs to blow off some steam very much. <laughs> Yeah, Navy Brony like played some sound clip there into the speakers, and I could not hear what it did said at all because. <laughs> well, to boost viewer engagement, kids will be encouraged to play a drinking game. Each time one is replaced by the word "pony," take a shot of apple juice. Yes, yes, I actually I saw those earlier too. It's it is a shame because some of those are just hilarious that some of them aren't legit, but you know, it's it's the first. What do you expect? Episode 422, Best Pony. New Pony comes to town and she's cool and likes craft beer and Legos and has a typewriter cutie mark. What? <laughs> what? I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's a Thisto. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, not going there. I'm not touching that one. I mean, you guys, you guys can on. talk about it, but... I'm not touching it. Yes, let's it. move on from Tweak's humiliation and yes. discomfort. Let, let's let's I'm move on. From the April Fool's boss. spoilers of My Little Pony here. And go on to, I suppose, um, the first thing we can talk about is the continuing progress on the FOB Equestria and Military Brony merchandise. It is, there is progress being made. It is um, somewhat slow, but, you know, it's as quickly as we can manage to get it done. Silvermane, who is here with us, has been working diligently on coin designs, which, as far as I know, we still don't have a means of distributing. But no. now, are these like challenge coins that we're making? Yes, the, these are. Yes, challenge they coins. are. And, and I've got the back design finalized. I'm just waiting on Miche to get me the uh, vector for the front. This, this is the one we used on the shirts. And when I get that, I'll tweak it a little bit and send it off to the artist. Now, the place I use gives you unlimited free uh, rewrites on the artwork, so y we can do it as many times as we want till everybody's happy with it. This is actually the third time I've had design coins. I did it once in uh, Kuwait and once in Cuba, so I know the people and I know how kind of they work. I want to get them all done by... Uh, Canal. I want to get them all done by uh, BronyCon at least. Right. And yeah, that would be great if we could have them ready for BronyCon and start handing them oh, out to Oh, they'll be people. ready for BronyCon. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> for those of you who didn't catch it, Tweak made a reference to Silvermane's age there. <laughs> Saying something about storming Guadalcanal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's been, he's been in the he's been in the military so long. His first chaplain was Jesus. It was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th these jokes were pretty prevalent at Las Pegasus, if I recall correctly. He did the manif <laughs> he did the manifest roster for the Ark. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Get some new material. Stop it. it hurts. Well, actually, it's not new. It's new to these guys. Not too not new to me. But you know, fun and it's still fun. <laughs> so but anyway. It only takes once you give them, once you give final approval to the proofs, it takes it only takes fourteen days to uh, get the coins back, so it, it won't take that long. Right. Um, for those of Can't you wait who... to drop those in the bar, I know yeah. it's gonna be great. <laughs> Brony yeah, coins. Unfortunately, the mar Marines around me really don't do challenge coins. It's kind of a lost art. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not really big in the army either. Well, it, challenge coins are really a dying tradition in the military in general well sadly. i mean in the army they're still around but they don't use them for challenges it's mainly for like you know what they're kind of like merit badges or i'm trying to think what's a better uh way to look at it it's Trophies. little things you collect so you can see like oh i i met this big person i met this high ranking person so yeah. it's trophies trophies yeah yep i think that's, that's the they're achievements achievements 
Achievement unlocked. Yeah, actually, I just realized this week we have one person from every branch <laughs> in the podcast. Oh, yeah. Except for Coast Guard, but you know. Well, who cares about the Coast Guard? They're not they're not technically they're technically not a real military branch. Okay, sorry for sorry all you Coast Guarders out there, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, technically the Marine Corps is not its own department anyway, so it's probably Yeah, crazy. technically. Yeah, but we're part of a branch. The qu- the we were talking about branches, not departments. I suppose that's a fair enough argument. But yeah, so we have uh, Commander Firebrand, Marines, Navy Brony, or Navron, who is clearly Navy. Silver Maiden and myself. How do you know? I don't know. It was like, it's in your name or something. <laughs> but then we have Silver Maiden and myself, Air Force, and then Tweak Army. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. But I like that idea, the Tweak Army. Hmm. The Tweak Army. Hmm. Cool. God help us all. God help us all. I mean, it's isn't it yes, already Tweak's that. Army, considering you're, sh- you're molding and shaping the young men and women who come into the Army as a drill sergeant? And doesn't that just make you nervous as hell? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to my Army, Tweak? Oh, yeah. Things that should never be done in the light of day. <laughs> but, uh... So, oh no, he's doing fine. I mean, if you've heard the private Fluttershy story and the private Applejack story, it's like he's doing pretty good. He's doing. No, good I got the time. private Fluttershy story. The yeah, private Applejack. Like the first day at LPU. <laughs> yes, um, but so Tweak told the private Applejack story last week. I mean, if you want to retell it for Silvermane here, since apparently did, he did hasn't I, heard did it. Did I tell it when we were recording? I don't know if I did. I don't know if I think I you. Well, just tell it again for good measure. I mean, so, like I said, Silvermane ha- here hasn't heard it, and clearly he probably wants to hear it. All right, all right. Long story short, uh, this is when I was working at 30th AG, the replacement battalion. We got all the privates lined up in the hallway. This is the morning before they ship out to actual basic training. We got them lined up, and my senior drill sergeant's messing with them, you know, making fun of them, blah, blah, blah. Well, at one point, he makes time that he wants to make fun of me. So he goes, you know, drill sergeant Hughes, he's a brony. Does anyone else out here know what a brony is? Anyone a brony? And this one kid raises his hand and goes, oh, I am drill sergeant. I'll walk up to him and be like, oh, really? Let me ask you a question, Private. Who's best pony? And without hesitation, kid goes, Fluttershy. I got it right in his face and said, bull crap, bull crap. You get out of here with that weakness. Bull crap. You know what? You know what? Front lean rest position head. Oh. He got down in the front lean rest position. And I told him, all right, Private. On the down, you say apple. On the up, you say jack. You keep pushing until you figure out who best pony is. And for the next about 30 seconds or so, the halls of 30th AG rang with the cries of, Apple, Jack, Apple, Jack, Apple, Jack. I do have to give him props, though. I mean, seriously, to have the balls and basic to admit to being a brony, I mean, seriously, that's, uh, I gotta give him props. I really do. So yeah, he was a dirtbag, so it didn't matter. Oh, oh, he was he was one of oh, those basically. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He was a good soldier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well every now and again mm. you do get dirt bags going through, you know, basic training and Uh hello. Yeah, I know. You know, I hope you get those people I hope you get those people out. I hope you just smoke them so badly that they go crying home to their mommies. We I do can't do best. much. Mothers of America are pretty are pretty ferocious in how you're treating their little boy. Yeah. I hope you have like a brony hater go through and you just make his life a living hell. No, I've never had anyone admit to it, but we have I have had people, you know, call their mothers and tell them, Yeah, your son's getting kicked out of the army before he even joins the army because he's a little so and so and he can't handle the stress and he wants to go home. You know, I had when I went through my basic about four years ago, um, or actually, wow, it's coming up on five years now. Um, but beside the point, there was one guy who was initially my roommate, my and first day he's like, "I'm not doing this." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm out processing tomorrow morning." I'm like, "This is day one. What did you think the military would be like? Seriously." Did, did you not expect this at all? Why did you even come here if you aren't even going to stick it out for, like, a week? First day, just right out the door. So you could just leave when you want to in basic? Um, at least that's the way the academy basic works. The moment you you can quit any time, start out processing if you think if it's too hard for you. Wow. Yeah. And then you're, like, 
uh, you're like in the uh, transition flight for like a week when they as they try to get all your paperwork done to get you properly removed from the military and all that fun stuff. But anyway, I think we've been on this tangent long enough. Going back to the coins thing. Um, going back to the coins thing. There is, uh, like I said, designs are being finalized. Silvermane has been working very hard. He mentioned that one design, which is, if any of you have seen our military brony shirts, um, it's the Royal Guard on the back that says military bronies. And I think it's a very good piece to have on the coin. I think it fits very well. And like I said, the coin, the product is almost finished. We just don't necessarily have a means of distributing it. Now, on the other side of that, shirts and patches and that sort of thing, Mache, as far as I am aware of, is currently talking with one of the distributors from Las Pegasus Unicon. And as soon as any merchandise is available anywhere, Military Brony, Fab Equestria, or otherwise, it will be posted on our site. So not only that, I want to talk to King Harold, who is apparently going by Major Tom now on Skype for <laughs> whatever reason, um, about setting up a page where you can see what merchandise is available and it'll have links that will bring you to the website. So if you don't catch the post, you know, in the week that it's on our front page, then um, there you should fail. be... You well, first of all, yeah, you, you kind of fail. And second of all, um, as is the natural order of things with the blogger style, it's going to go to the into the archives of it eventually, one way or another. So I would like to have a page set up so people who come to the site after the, after the post is way, way past its date, um, they can still navigate their way to the merchandise if they're looking for it. So it makes sense to have it on its own separate page. It's just a matter of getting King Harold at a good time. As we all know, he is currently busy with other things, helping people with Buck, uh, which is the convention, the Brony convention going on in UK. And hell, I believe he is helping them set up their website. So he's not exactly a man of free time at the moment. But like I said, uh, we don't even have the merchandise finalized yet. So there's no particular rush, but just be on the lookout for that. And I suppose that covers all the merchandise talk. So moving on to the next thing. That uh, Tweak and Silver, I want you to kind of take the lead on this, Bob, uh, the Fiesta Equestria. So the con that's going on in Texas, where exactly? Is it Austin, Texas? Houston. Houston, Texas. <laughs> the, <laughs> West, the West Chase Marriott, right downtown. Right, so they will be our two Fob Equestria members there. Yes, I will be there. If you do not know, I'm actually from Houston, so I will be in my native environment. You can study study the wild tweak in his natural habitat, if you were. Yes, that... I have no idea why I said that like Snindy Whiplash mixed with uh, Steve Irwin, but I did, so deal with it. Deal with it. But, yes, honestly, if I wasn't flat out broke, <laughs> I would probably be going myself... Texas isn't all too far from Arkansas. I would probably just drive there instead, you know, save some money. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, like I said, broke, not time. Yeah, sad. But you guys, you guys are trying to get press passes. Isn't that right? Yes, we are. Like I said, they've been in for about a little over a month now. I put in the press pass. I put in a volunteer request, and I put in one for uh, – Oh, I can't remember what else, but the the, the uh, volunteer one came back real quick saying, yeah, we could really use you and we'll do whatever you want to do. And then the, I haven't heard anything from the press one yet. I but haven't got, either. I also – oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, uh, I've got the room all set up and, uh, you know, we, me and Tweak was going to bunk together, but he's got family there. So I invited uh, DJ Shamrock to share the room if he's coming down because he said he's going to try to make it. So if he can, that's going to be great. Yeah, and I also I sent in a request telling them that I would like to volunteer for whatever they can do for me, as well as the pressing. I actually sent in a, I I offered my services to be host a panel actually, like be one of the host MC people because I mean Lord knows I love listening to Final Draft, you know, talk about things that no one cares about as much as the next guy. But Ow. if we get someone else to actually host a panel every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Um. And we need to talk a little bit maybe about uh, firing up a brony or a military panel down there, too. They still have, I think, three panel slots open at Fiesta Equestria, and they are going to have a bro military brony luncheon on Sunday. If Yay, you would like, if you would like I could, I could go yeah. ahead and send that in if you want me to. 
Yeah, that'd be great. That's what I was talking to Acer the last couple of days about how he did and some of his ideas. I think as many bases and, and things and military people that are in Texas, a military panel would go over real well. Oh, well there you go. Yeah. Holy crap. Things are being accomplished right here on the podcast. You people are witnessing history happening unfold before your na, eyes. Na, na, yes. Na, so be grateful. Na, na. When do we start talking about FOBCON? <laughs> Oh God! Uh, uh, we, long way from that. We, <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's just two dudes hanging out behind, you know, in a shack behind Silvermane's house. Oh God! How did you all had a shack PMCs back there. around it, though. <laughs> How did you, <laughs> Silver? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Not going there. <clears throat> D- don't stay out of his shack. Stay now out you're welcome to my shack hey, anytime. Hey. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> okay, so apparently a panel may be in the works. Uh, it's it's going to be at least attempted, apparently. Yeah, because Tweak is good at public speaking, and he's going to be in one at BronyCon, so this will be a good trial Practice? Run. Yeah, a good yeah. trial for t- Tweak. You get some practice. How do you like that, Tweak? I need no practice. I'm that good. Oh, yeah. Yes, as Just we all clearly good. know. We, we all are well, well aware of your public speaking abilities. I mean, you are and, a broadcast journalist, so it makes and sense. And his beard shaving abilities, too. And his beard yes. shaving abilities. I was upset though we didn't get to see the video of me completely jacking up DJ K Brony's uh, bohawk. Oh yeah. No, I mean, no, we didn't get that far, but we got Shamrock. Yeah, that that video was quite entertaining. Now we are talking about the shaving of DJ Shamrock, and for those of you not aware, DJ Shamrock is pretty much the head DJ for Celestia Radio. So um, he's he's kind of a big deal in the Brony community, just a little bit. And so Silvermane is bunking with him. Which is good times, but there was a shaving of DJ Shamrock that took place at Las Pegasus <laughs> Unicon, and that was that was very awkward because I got back and the old people on you asked me, "So what did you do in Vegas?" "Oh, I had some drinks, I was some friends, got drunk and shaved an old fat guy." "Uh, what?" And yeah. sang Danny Boy, and sang Danny Boy and Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody, Rhapsody, and and don't stop believing, and uh, living our prayer, and uh, and Bottom all Girls. the bad. All the bad songs. All the karaoke classics. All the karaoke classics. Yes. So that was... Lost Pegasus for us was crazy. The good kind of crazy. The only kind of crazy we know how to experience as military members. So. You know, I saw all the stuff on the, all, the, all over the internet about, you know, what a disaster it was. But personally, I had a great time. Yes. I know it kind of went down to flames Sunday afternoon but like the Hindenburg was... yeah <laughs> yes I saw your post Silvermane that has not been posted I, I saw that which I thought that was a good picture I thought it was too which actually we should probably uh, well I'm we should probably completely... discuss those old posts of yours yeah, and... I'm completely revamping the uh, the newsletter format I found a real nice template online that lets you just manipulate text and pictures all you want so I'm right in the middle of that right now besides the coins oh so perhaps expect more posts from Silvermane on oh, the yeah, site in real, the future real quick like I said I've got a couple pictures of Acer at BAP I'm gonna put on there and there'll be this really like three or four little stories and some pictures in each one it'll be lighthearted and informative just kind of what we need so we're apparently we're starting a more frequent newsletter host, headed up yes. by Silver and Silver I will make this promise to you right now um i'll try to be a decent editor and reviewer and try to as soon as you have one ready i'll have it posted to the to the site as quickly as possible the first one's about three quarters ready i just have to import some of the acer pictures and do a couple of more stories and it'll be ready now um are these the hoof prints posts of yours is mm, this what you're uh, referring to or are you talking about something else it's well, the hoof prints was a little more in depth. This is a totally different format. It's a okay. It's done on Microsoft Publisher. It's a newsletter format. It's kind of lighthearted and you know visually appealing. I Not see. Not quite as in depth as hoof prints is. Okay. So, like I said, I will try my best to be a good senior staff member on the FOB here and help to expedite those getting published for you. Okay, great. So, anyway, um, any more Fiesta Equestria talk you guys want to bring up or just have fun with? No. Yes. No. I can't so. wait till it gets here. Yeah. I can't <laughs> wait, that was Spanish. You said no. Yeah. Oh, they. Uh, <laughs> apparently, if you volunteer for all three days, you get your uh, pass comped. And I had already paid for mine, so I called up. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name that's in charge of the volunteers. I said, you know, 
what did I do? He said, well, you can go ahead and get your OC put on your badge for free, which is normally 25 bucks since you pay for it. I said, well, let's do that then. So actually somebody in uh, the UK is recommissioning it. Now, hopefully any day now it'll come out. Nice. That one I have posted on my picture, just like a base, basic template I did on uh, the Zoe's Pony Creator. Yeah, I, I saw that one. It it is pretty basic. I like how yeah, you gave it a mustache. Yeah, there's not much you can do with that, you know, really. I like how you gave it a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Despite you not having a mustache in real life at all. No. Well, but it, it mustache march is also now over. So you you technically, if you grow one, you're going against the against the flow. But anyway, moving on to the next thing, which is just a brief talk, I suppose. Um, I'm going to do a short promotional segment here. I'm always going to, for every podcast, I'm going to have a short segment called Charity Chat, where um, I discuss the, to my knowledge, what is the most um, pressing charity, the one that's about to come out. And, you know, I talked about them a bit last week, but I'm going to try to limit it to a promotion for the most recent one, which is... The Cure for Kiki charity album headed up by, or at least it was headed up by Alex Ackerman, otherwise known as Exile. Um, he's gone through a few names. If you know him by some other names, it might be, I think he went by DJ Phantom for a while and stuff. I can't remember some of the, I think he was DJ Clusterbuck as well for a bit. Um, but yes, he was heading that up. I don't know if he's handed over control to that. I know he is handling some personal issues, so I'm not quite sure if he is the head of that at the moment. But the Cure for Kiki charity album is nearing its completion so when that comes out this charity album will be to benefit kiki this little girl who is fighting desperately to for her life against the brain tumor and you know it is kind of the charity that tara has championed and the bronies have fully reinforced 100 percent. so uh when this charity album does debut be looking on the our site for a post about it we will be promoting it in full force because this little girl is absolutely amazing and we are doing everything we can to give her a second chance at life. And like I said, go donate, great cause, just be on the lookout for it. Now, any other charities you guys might be aware of that are nearing their completion, about to come out, or maybe are already out there? I take silence as a no. So, like I said, uh, charity chat, I just want to keep it a brief, but as a weekly ability, you know, chance to promote any charities that are out there or upcoming. So, anyway... Moving on to a topic of kind of interest, Weird Al made a Twitter post. That oh, uh, God. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, about three days ago, uh, Weird Al made a Twitter post that he did something with some people for something. He said he can't tell you what it is, and it'll, and it'll be out in the future. Okay, so obviously that's a very vague post, and it could mean anything. But, but. here's the thing. Weird Al has been – remember d during season two how Weird Al has been – was rumored to voice a character in season two? Yes, and I do recall. And he, even, and he even expressed interest in the show. He's a confirmed brony. He even – he expressed a lot of interest in voicing one of the characters. And he's actually good friends with one of the, with one of the sound people. Yes, I do recall that. And for those who are not aware of listening to this podcast, now they are aware. All right. So yes, um, you can probably see where we're going with this. This uh, we th it's it's my speculation that he's voicing a character in season four, but it could mean it could mean anything. But I got my fingers crossed. I like we can out. hope. We we can hope as much as we want to. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. <laughs> it would be He'll great. play Discord's crazy younger brother. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord, that's. <laughs> I don't know if we need a second Draconicus, an even crazier oh. Discord. But Jeez. it would be... We need a Draconic Equalicorn. <laughs> 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 yes, that is a reference to the April Fool's episode leak. That, if, For those of you not aware. But... We just talked about it like 10 minutes ago. I don't know if you mentioned that when we were actually recording. Because we yes, had a we large did. discussion. It was one of the first things we talked about. I, I know we talked about the April Fool's post, but I don't know if we referenced that specific post because we talked about a lot of the more specifics of it before we actually started right, recording. Right, 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 right. <laughs> now you get... Okay. So, um, actually, you know... Okay. So, you're familiar when Discord... This is kind of going a bit off on a tangent here, but you remember 
beginning of season two when Discord says, you should have seen the look on your faces, priceless, all that. That exact right. line, that exact line was, well, close enough to it, was used in Star Trek Voyager. I was watching Star Trek Voyager the, like a week ago, and I, Black Jack he said the that server. same line Black in the Jack same tone of voice, and I'm like, on the server. my god. Discord really is Q. So, <laughs> thank you for the inception blam there, Navy. It's ever so fitting. So, yeah, it was, I feel like I have to make a video, like, just drawing the parallel, like, showing one clip, then showing the next, and just being like, yes. 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 And they have to do something with Discord anyway, they kind of left, you know, he's turned good for a reason they haven't said what it is yet i'm sure hopefully we'll find out in season four my actually i just i didn't think that much into it you know silver i, I just kind of said oh discord's good now that's cool i didn't really think they were doing it for any particular reason well, but <laughs> celestia said i have a use for your magic and then nothing's happened so far so oh. there's a little foreshadowing going on there I oh. think. oh you got onto some foreshadowing i was not paying attention to dun 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 <laughs> So I suppose we have something to look forward to with Discord. You know, actually, I thought that was maybe a little weird, but also kind of understandable that Discord in the finale didn't make any sort of appearance whatsoever. I mean, like I said, it's partially understandable because God of Chaos is walking around, might throw the general populace into a bit of a panic, if not, at the very least, make them uneasy. So I can understand it to an extent, but... You know, it would have been kind of cool to have him there in the finale in some capacity. Well, he took a look around and saw what rarity is. He's like, oh, I got nothing. <laughs> I suppose. Season three, in general, I enjoyed it. Good times. Too but, short, but, you know, you take what you can get. Well, isn't season four confirmed to be the standard season length at this yes, point? Yes, it's 26 yeah. episodes. Yes. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that again. And it it's... Season four, I'm looking forward to it, definitely. It just starts like three months later. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> what I'm looking forward to about, I just don't know what they're going to do in season four. And that just, and that's just hyping me up. Yeah, it yeah, is kind I of exciting. I have no there. idea what's going to happen. Anticipation is definitely playing a part in the hype. Because like you said, we, after everything that's happened, the end of season three really could have been a, an, you know, a series finale almost. And just the way everything came together. So, the fact I read somewhere that originally it was supposed to be the season finale. Because, you know, most shows or animated shows go into syndication at 65 episodes, which was the end of season three. But it got so popular, they went ahead and did a season four. But the way it was written, you know, it was probably written eight, ten months before it showed. It looked like it was meant to be the season finale or the series finale. Hmm. Actually, I, I didn't, that did not occur to me, Silvermane. Uh, that you're, you, but you do bring up a good point. Most animated series do come to syndication at around sixty something episodes. You're absolutely right. So I, <coughs> Family Guy, <coughs> Simpsons, <coughs> Futurama. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm having a big cold right here. It's really hurting. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> those are just two shows that need to so, end. <laughs> Uh, if you if you say so, I, I actually don't really watch those. I never watched Simpsons, uh, but we're getting off subject here a little. Now, if there is anything else you guys want to talk about right now before we go into the main event uh, here, ha! horse pun, horse puns, yes. So, anyone have anything they want to discuss? No. Okay. Nope. Uh, sounds good to me. So, moving forward. As I mentioned earlier, we have with us Silvermane. Now, for those of you unaware, Silvermane is quite an oddity in the military brony community in that he is currently an EA, a senior master sergeant in the U.S. Air Force with, you know, 26 years of military experience, more military experience than I have of years living. So also happens to be about two years older than dirt. <laughs> One year older. <laughs> so I'm, I have a series of questions prepared. We're doing kind of an interview. Like I said, he is somewhat unique. And I would like a chance to pick his brain to an extent. But this is also going to be a group interview at any point. I would like to invite Firebrand, Navron, or Tweak to ask any questions they may have about Silvermane. But starting off... Yes, I... were you nervous at the Battle of Antietam? No, I was way in the back serving chow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> old guy references. Now, today is actually Silvermane's birthday as well, so happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. It is his 55th, so <laughs> if Skype isn't lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> it did not lie to you. Okay, so, yeah, he's, he's old enough to be my daddy. <laughs> I think you actually are only about one year younger than my dad. Wow. Yeah, so. You're older than my dad. <laughs> he like, is almost a decade older than my dad. It, there is an irony here in that he is the highest ranking oldest member among all the Fab Equestria staff, and yet he is kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. He is in charge of no one and the staff. So <laughs> there it's is kind me. of an irony. But, you know, he he's very wow. we still treat him with respect, obviously, as you would as you would hope we would. And he's very he's a very good sport about it, so we are quite lucky to have you. Now, I am going to ask the standard question. Why did you join the military? Like, what was your reason to join, for joining the armed services? Was it a family tradition or what have you? No, actually, uh, I was the first member of my family to join the military, and I wanted to fly helicopters. So I went down to the recruit. This was um, May of 1977. Went down to the recruiter, and they said, yeah, you look good. Take these tests. And I took the test, and they said, okay, uh, you're going to out Fort from Rucker the in August. So I went down to Fort Rucker in August and in process. And the second day they said, you have glasses on. You can't fly helicopters with glasses on. But I had already signed up. And I said, well, great. You know, um, what's the next job you have that you fly the most in? Well, it was crew chief, but they were full. So I took um, powertrain repair, the ro ba rotor balancing and all that, because you fly the test flights all the time. And I've been right. in ever since. Wow. So for the, did you I, – I didn't quite catch it. Did you initially say you joined the Army there? Did you? Yes, I've been in the Army for 13 years. Yes. So I guess that brings me up to my next question. Would you mind giving us the server. a bit of a brief – or you know, as, as much as you want to go in depth, um, a bit of a history of your military service there? Okay. Well, like I said, I joined in 1977, went to uh, Fort Rucker for three days, and I transferred over to Fort Eustis, Virginia for school until March of 78. Then I was transferred to the first cab in Fort Hood, Texas, and uh, I was there till '79. Then I went to a little place called Mainz, Finten, Germany. That's it was given over to the German Army a long time ago, and uh, I was there till 1980. And I got out, and I got back in in 1990, November. And um, the unit I was in here in Tulsa was a guard unit, but they're actually attached to the 160th Special Forces in uh, Fort Campbell, and we got activated for a year. And we became part of the 160th. I went to the Green Platoon and got the Maroon Beret and all that stuff. But when we came back in 2003, they had outsourced all the, the mechanics jobs, the helicopter jobs, to civilians. So they said, well, you don't have a job. Ouch. And I went over to, yeah, I know. I had an electrician license because that's what I did full time. So I went over to the uh, Air Force side and they said, yeah, we just happen to have an opening. So I've been with the Air Force since 2003. And I've been to, uh, I've been to um, Germany and Belgium, and France, and England, and Iraq, and Kuwait, and Afghanistan, and Qatar. So you've, you've been around the block. I've been around times. here and there. Yeah. And I love it. Like I said, I'm not leaving until they kick me out. Yeah. Which hopefully won't be anytime soon. So. Well, five years. If you turn 60, you get kicked out anyway. Really? I, was, yep. I wasn't aware of that cap. So <laughs> apparently the Air Force doesn't like anyone over 60. I mean, you have to retire at some point, right? You have to retire at 60, yeah. Timed they out figure from that's 75% of your retirement pay in 30 years, and you're out. Now, uh, I, I believe you mentioned in one of our conversations that when you made the switch from Army to the Air Force, you were an E6 in the Army, and then in the Air Force, they bumped you down to E5? Yeah. Um, it took me, like, in the Army, the unit I was in, you couldn't get promoted to E6 until the slot was open. So the shop superintendent in our shop, Stayed there for 10 years. I was an E5 for 10 years in the Army. As soon as he left, I got it like a week later, and we deployed, and we came back, and I went to the Air Force, and they said, gee, you haven't been to our Air Force school, so you can't be an E6 supervisor slot until you went to the Air Force school. So they brought oh. me back to E5. I know it sucked. And but I went to the school, and then two years later, I was E6, and then two years later, I was E7, and two years later, I was E8. Yeah. Hey, well, at least you made it up the chain to E8 now, and you're kind of just Finally, waiting. yeah. <laughs> you're kind of just waiting on that chief slot now. That will be in three years. Well, at least you'll make chief before they uh, kick you out, or at least hopefully before they kick you out and say. Well, I lucked out because in the Air Force, if you enlisted in the military before 1980, you only have to hold the rank one day to retire at that rank. Oh, nice. Yeah. Right so. now, they got what they call high year of tenure. You have to, it's the highest rank you held with, for the last three consecutive years. So I lucked out that. 
Yes, it, d it definitely sounds like you... It sounds like... Well, I don't know. It sounds like luck has been on your side and been off your side every now and again. Yeah, I mean, it's standard military. You know, everybody's got stories. Stuff happens. You just got to roll with it. Yeah, it, I think that's the best piece of advice <laughs> anyone can ever get is, you know, roll with the punches, work with what you've got, and don't ever right. let yourself be discouraged. Just keep going forward. Exactly. So I would actually like to know is how exactly did you come to be a brony? Oh, my God. Well, I knew who Tara Strong was because, you know, I, I've, I've been interested in animation for, God, 30 years. And I got a whole bunch of their collections because I, I have no artistic ability at all. But it, it, watching somebody draw and animate, it's almost like magic to me. So I've been a fan of animation and followed it and have a lot of collections. And I knew who Tara Strong was because she started doing um, – the Fairly Odd Parents, voice of Timmy Turner. Right. Like 2001, maybe, 2002, a long time ago. And uh, I've still, I saw her in a couple other things, and then, you know, I knew who Lauren Faust was from her work, and um, I, I also follow Star Wars a lot, and I got this email alert that John Delancey's doing a voice on My Little Pony. And I thought, eh, you know. I remembered it from the <laughs> 80s, G1. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I didn't even think anything else about it. And then I got another email saying that the show had been aired. And I was like, wow, really? So I got on YouTube, and it was, you know, the seats, the two, the two-parter, Elements of Harmony. And, and I was watching, or the Discord, and I was watching. I thought, this is great. This is wonderful. And then I saw that Tara Strong was in there, and I saw that, uh, um, What's his name? James Wooten was on there, and a lot of these people I had known was on there. And, so, and the right and Lauren Faust, of course, she left after the end of season one, but she was right. still had, she was still had input. And you know, it, like a lot, like a, happened to a lot of people. I watched it more and more, and I started liking it more and more. And then I started getting into looking into other aspects of the fandom, the music, the art, and what I found out was the art, the the level of artistry that people show in the fandom is I've never seen it before in my life. I mean, you look at something like Spongebob or something that's been around, you don't see near the fan input that you do with this. No, not, not even close. Every day I get on the internet, I'm amazed at the, the level of, of uh, talent that people have in the fandom. You know, even if, uh, even if it quit tomorrow, I think it would be able to carry on just from the, the caliber of people we have in here. <laughs> Navy Brody. <laughs> 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 what is it? Yeah, I think that actually, I think that fit perfectly right there. This actually, the fandom's actually grown beyond the show a little bit. It's taken on a life of its own now. I, I agree, definitely. Now, I do have to ask, did you know about bronies before no, coming to learn about I never the show? even heard the word. Okay, so a, a little different for me. I didn't know about bronies before knowing about the show, and... My opinion was initially very negative about bronies, but as we see, I've come around. I've, I've seen the light. And, um, <laughs> as one way of putting it. Now, from the sound of it, it sounds like you came... Okay, into... is someone taking a damn shower? <laughs> yeah, Gina, that's Silvermane. There's, there's background Gina, noise for Silver. Gina, turn it Get off. out of the shower and the computer, you dirty old man. <laughs> no, it was just a skillet going. It should be... <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, apparently, someone... Is cooking in the background for Silvermane. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, like I was, um, I was going to ask the question. It, it sounds like you came into the fandom about, uh, well, came across the show about the beginning of season two. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So about the same time frame I did, that was what, August, September time frame of Probably 2011? Around, yeah, late September, maybe early October. Okay. Yeah, I came in around Luna Eclipsed. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've all been... It sounds like we've all been in this fandom for over a year now. We, we've, we're uh, <laughs> pretty well versed. Now, I, I do have to say, I do have to ask the other question, which is, were you ever a secret, Brony? Was it ever like one of those, oh, no one yes. must know my about, secret? Yeah, about six months. Because I didn't know that Fob Equestria existed or, uh, you know, First Austin Platoon existed or any of that. So I was like, I'm the only one in the whole military. You know, I'm going to get kicked out. I'll be, I'll be on the front page of every newspaper. So, <laughs> Oh, gosh. I Again. know that feel, bro. Yeah, we I all know, know that so feel. I, like, I ain't telling nobody. I'm not buying no swag. I'm not doing nothing. You know, I'm going to pull the curtains, and it's going to be at midnight, and I'll watch it under a hood. But And then uh, <laughs> I saw something on Equestria Daily about Bob Equestria, and I was like, wow, really? Military bronies besides me? And 
I looked it up and I, I read a few posts and you know lurked around for a while and then I saw the deal that they needed a journalist and um, I talked to uh, Josh and I talked to Mache and Saunter and the rest is history. Yeah, so actually that's exactly, you answered one of my questions before I even got to it, which was how you came across, how you how exactly you became to be a member on our staff. So that's, I guess you, uh, you're just too good, apparently. But um, <laughs> I was going to ask something else, but it completely slipped my mind because I was just like, oh, wow, he's answering my questions before I even ask them, sort of moments. So, oh, yeah, and... Your comment, basically, it wasn't a question, it was an observation. Your comment about how you thought you were the only one, I mean, it's that always seems to be the in, military brony's initial reaction, is when they first become a brony in the military, a lot of times they just think they're the only one, and they kind of Right, we well, had this culture of, you know, fight, die, kill, you know, jump out of trees with a gun, knife in your teeth, and then you sudden, well, I like pastel Rainbow's color talking pony. Rainbow's pony sunshine. And so, with names like... Twilight Sparkle and Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. Yep. Yeah, I had a brief, I had a brief five-minute period of insanity when I had to admit to myself that I'm a brony, and I was like struggling in my mind. It's like, like this does not compute. <laughs> does not make sense at all. Ah, so it does not compute. Explain, explain. Does not compute. Yes, thank you. You are the creep. <laughs> okay, so I do have to ask now that we've so easily and so smoothly led into it. Does anyone in your workplace know that you're a brony? Does it ever come up? Is, do you have plenty yes, things on your desk or anything like that? I have Pinky on my desk and I have Apple. I got the little uh, the, the little mini figurines. The blind so. bags? No, they weren't the blind bags. They were the ones at uh, Walmart. You got, uh, you got uh, Lotus Blossom. I'm trying to figure it. Lotus Blossom, Pinky, and uh, I think Scootaloo in one, and Zacor, Applejack, and Apple Bloom, I think, in the other one. Oh, Applejack. I know. Oh, I'm jelly. So, uh, yeah, they said, what is this? I said, well, you know, they're, they're, they're little figurines from a, uh, a TV show. And, what TV show is it? What's My Little Pony? Do you like it? And I said, yeah, I like it. I like a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, how much flack can anyone really give you, though? I mean, well, they gave me a little, but it's kind of like died out. I mean, what are you going to do if you don't care and that they know it? They, there's not really anything they can grab a hold of and, and, no, there and isn't. pass you about. No, but also I was going to say, how much flack can you really give someone with as many stripes on their shoulder as a senior master sergeant? Exactly. <laughs> it's well, easier. you give a drill sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually had two people from our unit come up to me. You know, because we have commanders calls all the time with the whole units. They're like, "Right, I heard you like My Little Pony." I said, "Yeah, well, I do too." But I was thought again. You know, I thought I was the only one on base because we have like 1,100 people for drill week. And I said, "No, dude, check this website out and this one and this one." I said, "You're not alone." Yeah. So, you know that part too is good, bringing other people into the herd that you know may thanks made that they're alone. Oh yeah, and I I try to do that as best as I'm able as well. You know, anytime I try to be a blatant brony. Oh, every time I'm in civvies, I'm wearing pony something. And, you know, it, I think it finally got it made its way around my, my AMU, my maintenance unit, that uh, I'm a brony. So it, it's good for me because I don't care. It, you know, people can give me as much flack as they want. I right. won't care. But now, since it's public knowledge, anyone who is secretly a brony in my AMU, well, they know I'm at, I am, you know, one of those people who is a brony. And if they have any sort of... If they have any desire to make connections, it's there. The door is open. It's so. there, exactly. And it's funny who you meet that, you know, you wouldn't even think was a bro in here. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, we was, uh, going, my wife and I went to the movies last week or two weeks ago. She had, she had on her Rainbow Dash 20% cooler shirt and the ticket taker, you know, was looking bored and he goes, oh my God, that's Rainbow Dash. She said, I love that show. And me, I said, oh yeah, who's your favorite pony? And he said, Rarity. I said, well, you know, you're cool except for that part, but, you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> Whoa, Rarity is Whoa. best part. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, here it oh, comes. Gosh. Here it comes. Oh, God, yeah, let's not have this conversation. No, no, actually, this was a conversation. Again. This. And again. And again. And, uh, and again. I had All right, my Scott, we get the point. <laughs> so, I had my Pinky Loves Bane shirt on about a month ago at the bookstore, and the, the clerk said, Oh, I love that show. I love that show. So he took a picture of it. Nice. So uh, this this question was on my list of questions. Who is best pony in your eyes and why? Clearly. Me? We have to hear your reasoning. 
Well, I like Fluttershy, and you You're know, wrong. I did that Brony test on uh, Equestria Daily, and it said Twilight Sparkle, but nah. I like, <laughs> you know, she's sweet, calm, timid, but the crazy's right under the surface, usually. Oh, yeah. It doesn't yes. take much to bring the crazy out with Fluttershy. It's always the quiet ones. <laughs> it's always the quiet ones, exactly. And for Best Philly, I've always liked Apple Bloom ever since they did uh, oh. with Bridal Gossip when she was the only one that wasn't afraid as they core and the whole, everybody in Ponyville was hiding. She's the only one who went to Everfree Forest by herself to check her out. She's an Earth Pony. She has no special abilities, but she's the brave one. I think I'm, I'm, Apple Bloom is a close second for me, but honestly, Sweetie Belle has number one in my book. Yes! And we know Babseed has, well, I know Babseed has number Babs. one in Tweak's book. Yeah. Babs is best Philly. <laughs> so everyone clearly we have differing opinions here, but you know that's what they are opinions. Everyone is entitled to theirs, and well, if you don't like it, you can go pound some sand. We don't really care. <laughs> but anyway, I have to find my next question here, which I suppose would be. I have to tell you though, I'm way jealous of Tweak's Pinky. He had her everywhere. Oh uh, yes, in, uh, Lost Bag Assist. LPU and if I was looking on some of the videos that uh, I think it was Saber Spark posted a whole bunch of videos, and you can see Pinkie Pie and all those shots bouncing around through the crowd on his shoulder. Wow! So apparently, Tweak more famous than uh, he or I was aware. He's pretty famous for that. Apparently, him and his Pinkie Pie going everywhere to Pinkie. con. <laughs> Pinkie was my only friend. Oh, I, I I don't know if you could say that. I thought I thought we were friends. Aren't we friends? We're, we're work acquaintances. Oh, You're my boss. We can't be friends. <laughs> and it was funny because he bought Pinky before the con even opened officially. Yes, he did. Silvermane and Tweak and I think even Mache got into the con floor a little earlier because of their press passes and stuff. I, my flight got delayed, so I didn't actually get there until like the day of the con starting, which that annoyed right. me. But anyway, this is completely going off on a tangent. Now, on the subject of bests and favorites, what do you have a favorite episode? And if you do, why is it your favorite? Well, I have two, really. I have um, Lesson Zero, which everybody kind of likes because just how uh, Twilight got went completely off the rails. And I also like uh, Games Ponies Play just because it showed rarity in a kind of a different light. Right. I, I'm actually having trouble recalling which one Games Ponies play is. Is that I'm not the Games Ponies play, but a dog and pony show. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, a dog oh, and pony show. A, a, hmm. Thank you. Yes, that one was really good. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> this it's like, what, is like, whining. Like it's, like it's like with the portrayal that Rarity's been getting lately, it's like I have to go back to those season one episodes to remind myself why I love Rarity the most. Well, supposedly they, the writers mentioned at LPU that she will have an episode in season four. And I was like, I sure hope so. She sure didn't get one in season three and Spike no. got two. Yeah. And Although Spike characters. got Spike. Yeah, it's like Spike got two, Applejack got two. Yes. And they just portray her so badly. And they well, she just was portrayed, portrayed her so badly in season three. They did, yeah. Especially the part when she had a uh, Sweetie Belle pull that card and push her at the same time. Yeah, that wow. was no. it's like funny. In her I liked it's like it. in her I defense, was... Sweetie Belle wasn't complaining. Which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Slave labor is okay if they don't whine about it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to see a little bit more rarity in season four. Yeah, I think a I think a lot of the fandom would, and, and that's. I know I would simply because I like a well-balanced season. I like to see, sure, I might have my favorites, but I do like to see every pony get their, you know, time under the sun sort of thing. You, you know, I like. Now, that's one thing I did like about season three. It's like we actually got, uh, uh, we actually got Applejack episodes that did Applejack justice. Right. Yes. She needed those. Applejack yes, definitely. Best needed pony them. needed a good episode. But besides uh, Applebuck season. But um, we also discussed how, what was it, Spike at Your Service? No, it wasn't Spike at Your Service. It was uh, the pet episode where basically it kind of didn't do Spike justice. Just for sidekicks. Just for sidekicks, yeah. yeah. I don't think any episode featuring Spike does him justice. It's like, I really like Spike as a character, but he just shouldn't have episodes. It's like where he belongs is just on the sidelines giving snarky commentary. Yeah, the, yeah. Like, that's what, that's what I like about him. The thing about Spike is that he's not the best character as portrayed on the show, but to me, anyway, he has the most dramatic potential 
when you look at who he is. I mean, he is a, a dragon raised among ponies. But more than that, he's, a, okay, a dragon who will most likely live for thousands, if not hundreds of years, living amongst ponies that are going to die much quickly. That's a lot of dramatic potential right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, you know, I was really disappointed in the way they portrayed him in uh, Spike at your service because they made him so, unless he did it on purpose, so bumbling he couldn't even sweep a floor without messing it yeah, up. Yeah, that too. I, and mean, I was like, no, not Spike. Come on. Yeah. So, I don't know. Actually, th this does clearly, I know why Tweak is so interested in Spike. You know, being a fan fiction writer, he loves to expound upon those interesting little aspects of equestrian life. Now, and my fan fiction, Finding Your Place, is out right now. Yes, yeah. And also, one thing I just really don't like about Spike episodes is that whenever they we get a Spike episode, they all they all seem to take all, just his flaws and crank them up to eleven. Yeah, and that's just that just really irritate. That just really irritates me. Now, going on to the question, I that I did have a question based around that. Um, you know, I kind of made the side reference to tweak writing fan fiction and Silvermane. You are a journalist on our website. Now, you seem I've read some of your stuff. You. You definitely seem to have a talent for writing to an extent. I will definitely uh, say your writing style is probably better than mine, at least <laughs> on a first pass. I look at it, and I'm like, wow, it's really neat and clean, and I can read it without having to stop and say, what was I just reading? Because right. So I, I'm just curious, have you ever given any thought to writing any sort of fan fiction for this community? Well, I have I've wrote a couple fiction um, stories, but, uh, you know, I, I like fan fiction. I read it, but the thought of me doing it makes me uncomfortable because it seems like I'm stealing somebody else's ideas. Hmm. So, no, I've never, I've been tempted to write fan fiction and I've got ideas, but like I said, it's just, it, I might try it later. Just the thought of it kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. I love reading it. And like I said, I've read tweak stuff. People got some of the, the writers, they could write professionally and make a living at it. It's so good. And right. you know, the, the, the devoting it to my little pony is amazing. But like I said, no, I've never tried it. I, I wrote a uh, one when I was deployed that, I read, they had, you know how they have books sitting around all over the place when you're deployed that people send? Yeah. And they were these gothic romance. And I read one, I said, wow, I could write that. So I wrote one called The Lord of Raven's Cry. That's about as over the top as you can get <laughs> in a, a gothic romance. It had everything in it. Castles on the moors, evil, you know, evil lords, uh, an imperiled princess. That's that heir to a secret fortune, the whole nine yards. But Wow. It does yeah, sound it was, like the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. It was so over the top. It was funny. But that and... Uh, I wrote a parody of the Twilight series. That was about it. Oh God! Yes! I kind of, I kind of, you piqued my curiosity. I might have to ask you for that sometime. My body is ready. <laughs> and I combined. I think I'm trying to remember. I combined all the the whole all the movies into one title. It's called Twilight of the New Moon Before the Breaking Dawn, or something like that. <laughs> and it was just so ridiculous. I called it Spoon eclipse. Oregon instead of Forks Oregon, and uh, Fiona Fonatella was the uh, heroine. It was just ridiculous. Wow. Uh, I might. It sounds like a fun time. Definitely. So, okay. Whew. Moving on to the last question I have prepared. And then I guess we'll open it up to any message received. Perhaps questions you guys may have. The um, So, I was just wondering if you. So, it has been hinted at that you recently went to Las Pegasus Unicon with a few other, few other Bob Equestria staff members, myself and Tweak included. This is true. I was just wondering, is that your first Brony convention, or if you've been to other Brony conventions, or other conventions in general? That is my first Brony convention, but it's probably my 20th convention, because I've been to a lot of Star Wars and Star Trek and anime conventions. Okay. So, now, and in fact, I helped run the one in Tulsa a little bit, the uh, Trek Expo they have here. And that's actually where I met uh, John Delancey the first time. I told him when we was doing that interview, I met you once before, because he used to do a little show with uh, Leonard Nimoy, and they came through Tulsa, and I met him then. But he doesn't wow. remember. You know, he meets thousands of people. Oh yeah, day, probably. yeah. It, it's understandable. People in those positions, you know, it's they they definitely do meet a lot of people on oh yeah a daily basis, and it's hard for them to. I mean, I can hardly keep some of the people I meet <laughs> on a well, regular you know, basis course, straight in my workshop. So, of course, when you're interviewing somebody like Tweak did and like you did, you got to keep the fanboy pushed down and oh, yeah. stay professional. You know, you guys did a real great good job with that, and I was all impressed, especially with the way you and uh, you and Tweak handled the, the interviews at LPU. Because, you know, you can like somebody, admire somebody, and then you meet them in the flesh. It's really hard to keep the fanboy pushed down. It is. And a little bit bleeds questions. through. Yeah, not as the same question they've been asked a thousand times before. Right. Now, I'm just wondering, Brony conventions, um, how are they maybe 
What do you like about them? Like, is there anything that sets them apart in your book from regular oh, conventions? Oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, um, Brony conventions seem like they're a lot more welcoming to everybody, and I've never met a group of people that are 99% happy at a Brony convention. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of happy people at, at Star Trek conventions, but it's been going on so long, there's a lot of drama and hard feelings in it, too. So you get these little cliques and groups that don't like each other. And at the Brony convention, at least LPU, I mean, I, like I said, there was everybody was happy. Everybody was happy. Everybody was smiling, and it was just a great time was had by all. So even when we had the fire alarm, everybody went outside yeah. and saying, "Smile, smile, smile." And then when the we had the uh, meltdown on Sunday, you know, everybody that could help jumped in and helped. You know, we we did charity auctions, we did collections, we tried to get the um, the voice talent, and everybody paid, and you know, we made the best of a bad situation instead of just whining about it. Right. So perhaps bronies are best fandom? I believe they are, yeah. And I've been around a lot of fandoms. And like I said, they, they're the most talented, the most welcoming, the most open, honest, and happy fandom I've ever seen, especially at LPU. And I'll check out how Fiesta Equestria is, but I imagine it'll pretty, be pretty close to the same thing. Yeah, uh, hopefully. We, we are all hoping Fiesta Equestria goes well, especially for you and Tweak, and hopefully you guys can get some interviews there, maybe with yeah. Ashley Ball, maybe. That would be awesome. That would be. So, I, I, like I said, that was the last question I officially had scripted. Any, You guys have anything you perhaps might want to throw his way for this little interview we have going here? Silence is golden. Okay. Silence is golden. Absolutely. And duct tape is silver. Not be, a, not be pretty much asked the questions I wanted to ask. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought very long and hard about trying to get these questions organized because, you know, figured it should be at least somewhat professional. Even if we are more or less kind of co-workers on Baba Questia, still wanted to conduct this in a very professional manner. So I thank you for uh, taking the time to do this with me, Silvermane. It's been a great pleasure. It's been my honor. So I suppose that was the last thing I really had scheduled for this podcast. And you guys have anything you want to discuss? No, if we're here the hell up, I'm hungry. I need to get okay. some food. Okay, so yeah, me I, too. I'm going to just wrap this up. Typically now, again, oh, the weekly cry for help of we, need, we still need a head of music. If you have any sort of feeling that you may be perhaps right for this job, you are really close on following the Brony music scene. You might be familiar with the musicians or perhaps you make music. Um, and you have the time that you want to commit to helping us have our music session section on this website really fleshed out and organized, we would greatly appreciate you sending an application our way. Just fobequestry at gmail.com. Just in the subject line, you can title it head of music position or whatever you want. Just clearly let us know that this is an email applying for a staff position. But we definitely could use the help, as you are all well aware, that we are – pretty much all involved with our military commitments and our life commitments. So we can only run this site as much as our free time allows us to. And the more staff we gradually bring on, the better the site will gradually run. So if now there is one restriction, we do prefer, we do require that all the head staff members, every H, everyone who is in charge of a division, either be to your analysis monthly <laughs> no no monthly your analysis um well damn I, i'm screwed well actually maybe it, 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 we basically require you be military either you have served or are currently serving you have to have some sort of military service either actively going on or in your background because we want the head staff members to bring that military perspective that outlook that kind of t military spin to that division and if you've never been in the military, it's kind of hard for you to do that. So I'm sorry if you want to help, but you don't meet that requirement. Now, our junior staff positions, such as, you know, Tweak is here. He, Someone could be in his position and writing fan fiction reviews under me, but have no military service. We don't necessarily require that our lieutenants have that. So, but right. for this head position, like I said, sorry, has to have a military background. So... That, you know, the weekly grovel for help is done. Um, and currently, no major plans for next week, but Message be on the lookout. Received. We will um, basically, hopefully, well, we will have people here. and We will have stuff to talk about. But there is nothing scheduled right now at this point in time for next week. Nothing specific. But if you have something you think we should discuss, 
Simply send that to fobequestria at gmail.com, title it news or podcast in the subject line, letting us know that you that this might be something we should consider bringing up on our podcast, and we would be gra- very grateful. Uh, definitely, we can't keep track of everything in the community, so having you guys out there being your eyes and ears and really does help us a lot. So thank you in advance if you do send us something. And with nothing left to say, everyone, you can say your goodbyes if you want to. I would prefer it being somewhat organized, so from top down in the team speak. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Semper Philly, my bronies. Hi, Wither. I will be on the regular chat about... 1900 Eastern Standard Time. Goodbye, every pony, and I'll see you there. And tweak say yours. Yours. <laughs> Very Just good. Just hanging out, everyone. Uh, front to rear disappear. Front to rear disappear. Tweaks coin phrase now. <laughs> uh, and this has been the Fob Equestrian Podcast. Tune in next week. Semper Philly. <laughs>